we are now at the third level, hopefully. Um, hopefully you won't hear a beeping sound. There's been a car alarm going off here in the hotel for a while. Um, hopefully they've turned it off. So part three of the uh, initial set of lectures is basically talking about the formulas that you use um, if you wanted to use formulas instead of using your calculator. And basically this is what's pre-programmed into your calculator. We'll also start talking about how to use um, Microsoft Excel, which has formulas pre-programmed in as well. Um, when we look at really looking for future value, this first formula you see is this future value is equal to nothing more than the present value plus or multiplied by 1 plus the interest rate uh, raised to the nth power, where n is the number of uh, compounding periods we have. So this is just trying to find the future value of some amount of money we have today. What is that worth in the future? It doesn't involve any type of periodic payments or anything like that. It's just a simple, straightforward future value problem. Um, using that same equation, we can go through and figure out, okay, what's the present value? What's I? What's N? And we do all this by using algebra. Um, if you go back to your college algebra days, uh, you should be able to, to fall through this and, and be able to figure out where we're going with it. Um, I just kind of wanted you to see the, the actual formulas for it, for 100% of the time, you'll use a financial calculator or Microsoft Excel when it comes to solving these problems. Um, most people are not a big fan of, of finding the logs of different items. Um, so as a, as a graduate student in finance, it's as well as if you were a senior undergrad student in finance, uh, I would expect you to become very knowledgeable with Microsoft Excel. I would expect you to be at the, maybe not at the top level of Excel, but extremely familiar with it. Um, I'm more concerned with you being extremely familiar with Excel or numbers, if you have an Apple product, numbers, um, than I am about you knowing PowerPoint or Word or Access. Um, for finance, Excel is the, the major one you need to be concerned with. I don't really care about PowerPoint and Word and all that. Um, they have many functions built into Excel, including the time value of money functions. Uh, this allows you to build accurate models. Um, we'll spend quite a bit of time doing different models, and what we'll find is if we set it up a certain way, we can make small changes and see how that affects an overall project. That's known as sensitivity analysis. So we'll do uh, quite a bit of sensitivity analysis in this class as well. Um, even though they may look a little confusing in Excel when you see it, once you put in to, to find that formula, once you say, I want to use present value, it really, a, a dialog box pops up and it asks you, what do you want for interest rate? What's the number of payments? What's your uh, payment amount? What's the future value? What's the type? Usually you can leave type blank. Type just goes into when the payments are going to be made. Are they going to be made at the beginning of the period or the end of the period? For most times, they're made at the end of the period, so you just kind of leave that one blank, and that's what it automatically assumes. We'll talk more about this when we're actually in class doing real live person-to-person -person lectures. Um, the remaining variables, there's a future value one. Rate is how you find interest rate. PMT is how you find the uh, payment amount, and NPER is how you find the number of periods. There's a very good overview of time value of money in Excel at this link that I have here. Um, last time I checked, the link was still good. Hopefully it hasn't uh, been taken away, but by luck it probably has. But I want you to be fairly familiar with Excel. Uh, by, the end of this, by the end of this term, you're going to be quite skilled at it or you're going to be suffering mightily in the class. Um, that's our, our next to last uh, lecture. We'll have one more small lecture and then we'll be ready for class come Thursday night.